Parole King. Okay. <clears throat> he captures forests as well, right? He does. <clears throat> I don't know. Does he? He does, yes. Okay. He captures forests. All right. Man, that screen being shifted is the most annoying thing ever. I'm going to go for mm -hmm. just a general screen capture. It should work better. Oh, uh, yeah. There we go. Okay, so we need to set up some enemies. Uh, we need to be on the same team. Oh, yeah, Druid. That's a good idea. Yeah, I was thinking... Um... I don't really know the difference between Druid and Dryad Queen. I was going to go one of those, maybe. I think Dryad Queen is more like... Um, well, I, I've actually got no clue, but I would suspect it's more along the lines of, like, Goody Two-Shoes animals, whereas Druid is more just, like, standard animals, but I really don't know. Hmm. All right. So, let's go. Um, sure. I'll go with that. Okay. You can see right Join now. Join the stream. Awesome. Ah, oh, this faction is so good. I like it a lot. <laughs> I've never played on... Yeah. Okay, those are totally the goblins straight out of Warhammer. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> the night goblins. <laughs> hmm. Can't plant the forest yet. But I can definitely take those guys out. The cool thing is we can kind of prop each other up because we both require forests. Yeah. I hope definitely that... a mutual benefit. Yeah, that's right. But what I hope that means is that we're not competing for resources. I'm idea. sure we'll be fine if we just go in like roughly different directions. Yeah. Now how about you go northwest, I'll go northeast. Sounds good. Um sorry, let me just figure out these guys. Mm -hmm. Should be fine. Hmm. Okay. What do you need as a resource? Um, I need uh herbs. Herbs? Okay. And you yeah. get those from swamps or forests? Forests, anything really, anything tree related. Okay. Swamps, forests, ancient forests, everything. Holy crap, elephants attack my main base. I wonder if I can survive that. Did you live? Um, yes. Wait. Trees did a good job on it. <laughs> yeah. So is your Troll King character as strong as the one from yesterday or the last stream? Probably. 
I don't remember Control the weapon. King is really strong. Yeah, he's pretty tough. For me, what's really important are swamps. So I don't know if you, you need those. No, not at all. I'll take them. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, the swamps give me the most fungi. Oh, I love that. My my faction just like spawns units constantly. That's great. From the sacred groves, which I can make. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what you need for sure. Lots of spawns. Yeah, that'll help you against that faction we were just talking about earlier. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. You mean that terracotta army guy? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that was horrible. Yeah, that was rough. Meats are already taking over shit that I've conquered. These bastards. Um, oh wait, oh moose. Oh shit. Yeah. They are. Is the plural of moose meats or is that just something that someone made up? I don't know, maybe I have no idea. There's a necker oh my god. Ooh. Oh my god. The Hobbit army. Stay away, dude. Bro, I didn't see it. Oh, shit. Well, they are hobbits. They might not be that much of a threat. I mean... I, I guess. But even then, I think it's a bit optimistic. Yeah. See what happens. Please don't attack. Okay, they didn't. Fantastic. Lucky. Very. Yeah, I'm just gonna retreat from that for now. It's a very good idea. I love this game. Oh, it's so good. Sure does. This area really does not have that much forest for me. Um, oh, I've been planting it. You should be able to grow it too, right? I have. Oh shit, ambushed. Hope you survive. I mean, I'm sure you will, but... Who knows? Depends. Unless it's some, like, crazy horror, I'm sure you'll be fine. Hmm. But all it takes is one Vegas fly trap and bite your head off. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> hmm. I got ambushed by barbarians or something, it seems like. Yeah, I'm gonna die. Oh, I have nightmares from barbarians. <laughs> well, that's rough. <clears throat> oh, lost my first spellcaster. Do you need ancient forests a lot, or no? Not as much as you. No. They don't give me anything. Can I yoink it? Yes. Thank you.
So beware, there's like crazy barbarian dudes in the southwest. Southwest. I will be careful. This faction doesn't really take off until the troll mum arrives. The troll mum. Yeah. I remember seeing that once. The troll mum is like a really strong spellcaster. Um. Bring. My cult has died. That guy has not got a prayer. Not even the AI can survive. Oh. Got ambushed. I hope that's not too bad. Well, as long as it's not the bare chest of barbarians who kick my ass. Should be fine. <laughs> that is true. Oh, it's just goblins. Oh, it's goblins. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, wait, that's really, really nice. I'll let you get that village again whenever you want. Okay. Thanks. Um, I need 400 herbs for a single grove. That's insane. It is a big amount. I'm only getting like 20, and I've quite a bit of forest. Um... Oh, I hope so. Oh, are you kidding me, dude? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh my god. Was it a stack of poison or something that got you? Yeah, it was, yeah. Oh fuck. Oh man, what a what a rough stack. Do you wanna restart? That's really bad. <laughs> no, we should see this one to the end. Alright, you say so. Wow, he's so steadfast. <laughs> he is, for real. <laughs> you go, Cheb. <laughs> <laughs> if I lose the troll mum, then it's over. But I, I'll take right. losing the troll. I would be fuming. <laughs> yeah, I'm not happy, that's for it's sure. Fine. Definitely not what you want. Could you eventually get another Troll King, or is there only one? I can get another one, but it's going to take a long time. Uh oh. What a stroke of bad luck. Seriously. That is unfortunate. I looked at those guys and saw, oh yeah. Mother, the dwarves took my forest! You bastard. A singular dwarf! Whoa. Oh, come on. Something has terraformed the forest away. What's this shit? You know what? I planted forests in the desert, and they've disappeared. I guess they just couldn't survive. Mm. Oh, that sucks. That's odd. Huh. 
That really sucks. Nothing's going right this game. At least I can make gigantic mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> That's always something, I, I guess. I'm gonna try and go against this necromance. Brave man. Well... I think my army is quite good at fighting them because they all have javelins, so they can kill like one basically guaranteed. That's good. I also have a lot of bows. I should be okay, I think. Also, they're like really rich. So. Oh, yeah, you should definitely be able to kill those hobbits. And then, am I brave enough to attack that fort? It's risky. I thought I could handle Brilliant. like a bunch of four strength spiders and some shadows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you lost your troll king. Yeah. That's sad. There goes nothing. Oh, you got it. Oh! Okay, well, it's right. I lost four. That's like tend to steal all of his stuff. Nice. Very nice. That is a good start. Finally, I have a good start. <laughs> yeah, I took one to the team this time. <laughs> First I lose so I my... I hope that Kraken doesn't one-shot me. Yeah. First I lose my Shaman in the forest, then I lose my Troll King. Yeah. That was after I upgraded the Shaman too. Oh. Um. At least I can plant what trees. What is this? Oh, uh, Shaman. I hope the troll mum shows up. Maybe she won't show up anymore. If the sun dies, maybe she's just like, nope. Come out of here. That would be really rough. He, uh... I'm still up for, like, restarting if you want. That's all right. Well, this will be one for science. We'll see what happens. All right. Because you've got a good round. I mean, yeah, but I don't think it's that bad to start with this faction. If you have some forest, you should be okay. Hmm. All right, why don't we start over? Because I got pretty royally screwed this game. Yeah, sure, that's that. This you got done very dirty. Yeah. Let's see, Rusky number six. Oh. Too many games active. Try deleting one first. Okay. Oh, yeah. Take all these. Now you can have a risky one again from Fast Link. Yeah. Okay. Risky one with password one. Since we're both going forest, 
I'm thinking so I'm gonna do Dark Ages because it has lots of forest. Alright, sounds good. Okay, it's ready. Awesome. So what factions use forest? Dryad Queen, Troll King, Druid, is there anyone else? Um Witch. Oh yeah. That's Sorry true. about that, I don't know. Not a massive fan of Witch though, I don't think. She has some cool rituals, but I don't like her um her mushrooms. <laughs> Yeah. I enjoy Witch, but she's a little bit difficult. Okay, you ready? Um Yeah, screw it. We can keep looking if you want. No, it's all good. I was just wondering if she played Drag Queen or Dread, but I'll just go with this. I've never tried Drag Queen or Druid. I'm always drawn to the more evil factions for some reason. That's fair. I just, I want to see what kind of stuff they can get later. Like, mm. Forest Dragons or something. Or oh, they for sure have some really cool stuff. Oh, Is that cool. another player already? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Well, with a bit of luck, we can smash them. You hope so. Just don't get poisoned down again. Yeah. That was attacked in a swamp? Oh, come on. Oh, by a Hydra. Well, luckily, I didn't get killed. That's a good start. Definitely <laughs> yeah. a good start. It's a necromancer. We can take his gallows away. Oh, yeah. And before I get killed. Yeah. That would be very unfortunate. We should probably... Oh, I got ambushed. Oh, Damn. I think we should probably try and take him out though, like if we can. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you can just take a stud at all. I don't He'll know. die, no? Yeah, he would die. You have siege. You have boulders. You can just toss them. Oh, it's too risky. Those bane things are all no right. joke. They do a lot of damage. All right. And I, oh no, I killed them. Okay, I thought I died. That was really terrifying. That's amazing you killed them. There was a lot of people. Yeah, I know. That's the difference between the regular satyrs, like unarmed, and the upgraded ones. The upgraded ones are really strong. Yeah. I had to run away because his army came. There's quite a few boys. You're still at school, right? 
Uh, yeah. How's that going? Pretty well. Um, I've got my little... At this, at this point, I'm just preparing for my internship, which is... Which should be before summer. Summer break sometime, so... Where is it going to be at? I don't know yet. That's the oh. most exciting part. Um, um, we're trying to find a place that'll take me, basically. There should be plenty, but we just started the process recently, so... Yeah, there's um, quite a lot happening. That's really good. Yeah, it is good. Stressful, but good. Well, so far this game's going a lot better. <laughs> you didn't get insta-killed? Yeah. Tell me better. I probably jinxed it now, though. That is very <laughs> Knock <true>. on wood. <laughs> There's another enemy up here. Jeez, this map is tiny. Yeah. Damn. I'll probably have to go your way as well. It doesn't seem like there's anything over here. Yeah, what's going on with this map? I don't know. Um, I'll start getting over a little bit, probably with a tiny army soon. I'm just gonna fortify myself. That should do the trick. You know what's really scary is that all my poisonous fungi and stuff completely useless against the necromancer. Yeah. Frankly. Ooh, the pale one took the mine right there. Damn. I'm gonna link up my armies and try and kill them. Good idea. Not sure if I even can, to be honest, but I'll, I'll give it a go. Maybe I can help you. Um, we should coordinate the attack, so if you can, can you attack him now? If you can, I'll help. Yes, I can. Alright. Oh, I can't. Don't attack. I got ambushed. Alright. I will just stand. I hope he doesn't attack me. We'll see. It's probably his shit that ambushed me, actually. I was ambushed, and then attacked, and then ambushed. It's probably him attacking me. Yes, it is. Okay. Can I win this? Probably not. Uh, oh, shit. Where was that? Oh, that's pretty good. Where did he go? Oh, up in the hamlet, huh? Okay. I'll try and move back again. There he is. If he stays there, I'll kill him. Yeah. Is 
The worst part is this like, map. Hmm? The worst part is since I lost my shaman, I'm not collecting mushrooms anymore. Oh really? Damn. Yeah, it's really rough. Oh, you're setting up north to your king. Oh god. Mm. Can you deal with that? Um, he's got a lot of spearmen, so it's kind of a problem. All of his units can throw rocks, by the way. So he, he has ranged attacks. Yeah, I should run away. Like, maybe I could win, but it's too risky. Yeah, definitely. I think you can definitely take him though. I'll try. I should be able to, but you never know with this game. Yeah. Oh shit. Alright, I'm going after him. Um just cause my troll king got teleported. So I'm oh. in the middle of nowhere or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Hard. Right. Right. Interesting. Good luck. Yeah, because why not just teleport my shit? Job. Yeah, I won. I didn't even lose any bears. There you go. Oh. I'm gonna get some more. I got three bears from that one. That's huge. Damn. Now I've got this camel guy up against me. Camel guy? Yeah, this, this dude with all these camels and shit. Oh. Oh. Well, I've reinforced myself. I hope I'll be okay. Seems like he didn't attack me. I'll go down and deal with the necromancer, I think. Good idea. I think I'm strong enough for it. I'm gonna get a bit stronger first, actually. I'm really hoping that the troll mum shows up. Come on, mum. Help me out. I need your help, mum. Are you serious? From one of the summonings, you got three berries, and then it got three boars. That's quite the downgrade. <laughs> Whatever. How are you doing on the other side of the world? I'm kind of just quivering in my hole. <laughs> That's fine too. Alright, I'm attacking its uh, citadel. That's good. Hopefully I survive. I'm hoping that the troll mum shows up. Yep, he killed him. Wow, you're in a roll this game. I lost four bears! Oh my god. Shit. Massive ouch.
Yeah, there's Bane archers in her joke. I'm gonna try and go into this ancient temple and hope we don't get killed by whatever horror is in there. God. Oh, there wasn't any. That's good. I need to get a shaman so I can start collecting shrooms again. But it's not offering me any, and the mum's not showing up either. Yeah. Oh. Fucking dwarves, man. Stay away. The dwarves are awful in this game. They're so annoying. Is still there, Miss? I'm still here. How's it going, dude? Going good. That's good. Just watching the stream. What do you think of it so far? <laughs> well, it took me a minute to realize earlier that you started a new game, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just keeping up with it. Oh yeah. The other game was doomed, but this one isn't going too much better for me right now. <laughs> it's really not. I get, I stepped on a fairy circle and then my ass got teleported to the middle of nowhere. And then I lost my shaman. Oh dear. That's why you were saying, Mama, come help me, Mama. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I need the troll mum to show up so I can cast spells again. Come on, mum. I need your help. For real, I need mom to help me out. There's nothing I can do. Oh. So if, if I ever start again as Troll King, I'm just leaving the shaman at home. I'm not taking him out. It's too risky. Uh, I found the Scourge Lord. Damn. I'm gonna go ahead and just kill him. Yeah, if you can do it. Bye bye. Oh man, there's two ancient ancient forests. Yep, he's up. If I can get both of those, that'd be insane. Seems like he's still got more dudes there. Yeah, they can't move though, those in the coal mines, so I'm just gonna walk around them for now. I'm gonna kill this bear. Academy of Higher Magic, oh my god. That is one hell of a garrison. Yeah. Also, those doors are no joke. Oh, yeah. Well, I think I need to finally just gather my courage and head out. To the world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, I gotta get going myself. So, you guys have fun. Thank you for letting me join your stream. No problem. Thanks for watching. Absolutely. Talk to you later. See ya. Oh, I can finally get a <clears> shot. <throat> nice. Okay.
dude, this one boar is just going around taking everything. <laughs> I'm gonna go and try and kill it. It's so annoying. Yeah. Now things are finally looking up for me again because I've got my shaman. Excellent. I'm happy to hear that. Did you ever try Illusionist? I have not. Me neither. Oh, it seems scary. So. Oh, the, the trauma. <laughs> <laughs> At long last. Too bad Mez wasn't here to see that. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's starting to chill out a little bit more, the game. Yeah. Great. Oh, the Scourge Lord is down south again. Fuck. I'm gonna need to go deal with that. Luckily, he hasn't got too much stuff. Yeah. Um, if I take any uh, swamps, you can just take them. I don't need them. Okay. Oh my god, I'm so slow, I can't even move. What is slowing me down so much? Winter, probably. It's these are woodmen. Oh. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, they're slow as hell. Okay, well, Woodman, you can just stay there for now.
Oh, he ran up there, you bastard. All right, well, it's unfortunate. <clears throat> Just the fear that are immune to all my poison and just wipe out my shit. Uh, gotta love it. I might have found the camel dude's main sort of base or something. Oh uh, yeah. I guess so. I'm honestly just surprised that you're still going down there. You're just wiping them. Yeah. I mean, keep going, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll wipe them out for sure. Not sure I can take the Citadel though. Yeah, probably not. Even still, good job. That's a big fight. Yeah. Me too, bro. Looks like we're winning. <sighs> no! My Dryad Queen died! Oh, shit. <gasps> no! Oh, shit. Can you get enough one? That's so bad. No. You can't? Well, I probably can, but it's really difficult. Fuck. No. Oh, man. Alright, well. That's not great. Sorry to hear that, dude. I just... <laughs> yeah, you know the struggles. <laughs> yeah. They just gotta get lucky, I guess. Damn. Fuck. Alright, well, we'll see what happens. Oh my god, I don't even get any herbs in the meantime because I don't have anyone that uses it. That's exactly the issue I had when my shaman died. It's so rough, right? That is so rough. Oh.
some bastard wolves took out my stronghold. From town. Someone took my ancient forest too. I guess it doesn't matter since I can't even use it now. Man. I was gonna take this magic library too, but now I don't have enough units for it. Uh. My god, I just realized I can't even take forests anymore. <laughs> Shit. Oh my god. That's brutal. Yeah, when you go to recruitment, see if you can recruit some kind of spellcaster and you'll at least keep it. I, I can't. Can't. Uh. Yeah, this game is so rough. Really punishes you. Um, okay. <sighs> Tired of all these telemarketers and shit. Oh, yeah. The good news is I'm starting to terraform various forests into troll forests, and that means they're going to start producing carrion, which is going to patrol for us and just like clear um, out all the neutrals. That's nice. Yeah. I'm just wishing for a fucking mage. <laughs> You'll probably get one sooner or later. I hope so. <laughs> oh my god, hiccups. Lost a goblin shaman, but luckily I have other shamans. Still, it sucks. Yeah, that must suck.
This sucks so bad. Ah. That's no fun. I hope you get a caster again soon. Me too. You see how many swamps I made near the necromancer there <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> this thumbs. i've also been planting some forest near you don't know if you oh. can tell no <laughs> it's only one square but i'm working on it uh, oh a keeper of traditions, is that a mage? Yes, get it. I don't think it is. Right click on it. It's I'm going to shoot myself. <laughs> uh, I don't think it is. Oh. How can I see if it's a mage? When you right click on it, it should tell you its right. abilities. Alright, well, yeah, definitely not. Fuck. No. Unlucky. I'm so upset. <laughs> Man. Uh... I don't want a fucking hoplite. I mean, this guy is insane, but like, I don't need him right now. I need a mage. <laughs> um. Oh, this blue bastard is back. Blue bastard. <laughs> Reminds me of Abe from, you know, Abe's Odyssey or whatever. Yeah. Because one of the Glocken says that blue bastard in reference oh. to Abe. Bro, still none? Please. It takes an eternity. It really does. Thank you. 
Oh my god, I lost another commander. Bro. Bro. This is not your game. Oh, it was going it? so well. Yeah. It was going really well. Then um, we got Conquest of Leafland. I really did. They even took me Stronghold, bro. If you look um, sort of east of my capital, you'll see like a little farm. And then you look one square up, you'll see a carrion. It's like oh, yeah. one of my roaming units. Oh, they're pretty cool. Yeah. There ends up being lots of them just roaming around. When you get your um, spellcasters back, you'll have to go and occupy all this, all the forests with something like just one unit, just to keep the carrions from taking them. You know, I'm not sure if I can get a spellcaster anymore. There's no way this is normal. It's been so long. Oh, it's normal. Trust me. Uh. I've suffered in this game long enough to know that it's normal. You will eventually get <laughs> I mean, I hope so. Kicked you out of your iron mine. <sighs> yeah. As soon as I can, I'll do with the blue guy. That would be great. Oh, one of my carrions is attacking him. Oh, it killed his commander. <laughs> nice. Oh, it should. Did you see that? Oh, uh, yeah. Down. Thank <laughs> you. 
Stupid deer. Seems like nobody gives a shit about our game today, unfortunately. <laughs> you also didn't post it in the Discord, I mean, that's fine. That's true. Ooh, 12 phase spiders right next to my commander. I'm probably going to lose him. Poor Troll King. Very smart. At least I've got the mom though. I don't really care about the other one. As long as I've got the mom and she's safe. All's good. Hmm. Oh, oh my god, Dryad. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. That's awesome. Bro, fucking finally. Jesus. <laughs> I told you. God, that's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> I can start playing the game again. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, this dryad is really shit, but whatever. At least you can start accumulating um, things again. Yeah. That's I would, something, I guess. I would leave it in the Citadel just so it's safe, and then when you get a second one. I will, trust. Trust me, I have learned my lesson this time. <laughs> Imagine if you just misclicked and like lost her to a deer. I that would be my final straw. <laughs> what would you do? Uninstall immediately. <laughs> hey, is there a female agent? Oh shit, it is, you're right. Top of the window is glitching out. Hmm. This game is a challenge to stream because I had it in windowed mode and it was like only capturing a quarter of the window or something. And now in stream in screen capture mode it's apparently glitching out. You just can't win. Um let me see. We might have to put up with that because I could change it, but then it might just start glitching out again. Well, I'll give it a shot. Where's Ob's gone? There it is. Okay, I'll try changing to window capture. And we'll just hope for the best. Yeah, it's kind of not optimal. Let me know if this is better, but I don't think it is. I think you're only seeing the like part of the screen.
the good news is that the game is going pretty well. At least for me. Rusky had it rough. Uh, I would argue slightly, but you know, it's all good. Um, should I change it back to how it was, or should it should I leave it sort of cropped? Ooh, attack in the silver mine. I'll try fiddling with it again in a sec. <laughs> you could... Yeah, I don't know what's better either. Let me try fiddling with it. Let's try... doing this. And I'll um, clap my hands twice. And maybe it'll work properly. Bro, there's carrions everywhere. Yeah, they really spread out. <laughs> <laughs> See that? Jesus. That's what I mean. You'll have to occupy the territories. I'm trying. Probably gonna have to figure out how to get this game in windowed mode rather than full screen. And then it will hopefully work properly. Let's we'll see. Preferences. Borderless full screen, that might fix it actually. But I don't know if it's gonna automatically like update or not without restarting. Doesn't seem like it will. But it was working for the last streams, right? I don't remember. I also wonder. I'm not sure. These Karens are so good, I love how they just go around clearing up all the vermin. They've taken so much territory, bro. Yeah. 
It's insane. These things are like uh -huh. the the things you hear about in all the spooky YouTube forest stories about like people that see a weird half dead like um deer or whatever. Right? Hey, is or, that no, you, Rambo? Oh yeah, Sorry. that's all good. We're talking about yeah, all that kind of thing. Yeah, bro, that that could be like a for like a podcast episode. Could do an entire episode on skinwalkers and wendigos, maybe. I really like that. Let's do that. Yeah. Also, Hello. I always yeah. fall asleep to those stories. Like I really dig them. Yeah, like. They're they're also some of the best stories I've ever heard. I actually um, one of the things that uh, happened uh, a long time ago, and uh, this this was back in the um, in one of my old uh, earlier Discord uh, adventures. Um, I was in the server that was semi lockdown, and we kept getting raided by these group this group of Mexican kids, and yes, they were in fact Mexican kids. I was able to confirm it with like three other people because they all had like Mexican names like Lopez, Carlos, uh, Gomez, <laughs> Roberto. That just so it was funny because <laughs> eventually all these kids individually got doxxed because they were so stupid, but. I coined a nickname at the time. I called them Mexican Skinwalkers. Because when they <laughs> managed to raid or get it back into the server, they would do it through like a proxy IP and through a new account. So what they would do is they would go and use a VPN or a uh, something to hide their IP. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would create a new account, and then they would get in the server that way. And we'd get this new suspicious person. We didn't know who they were. And so it was like it was it was just like having a skinwalker <laughs> come in, and some of them even started pretending to be other members that were uh, accidentally kicked before. So then there was that kind of crazy nonsense. <laughs> Anytime it would happen, I just go screaming, "Alex, we got another fucking Mexican skinwalker! What the fuck do we do? Like, God damn it, kick, purge, you know, invite back whoever you know we can trust." God, we lost like over. <laughs> 200 people because it was like a, a large scale server yeah. i wasn't an admin i was actually a trusted member <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> oh god Story oh no, time god i'm fucking rambles. sad now i missed that place <laughs> yeah. i think it's sorry to interrupt i think it's better the way it was oh hang on I'm going to try something stupid. Let's see if that works. I just fiddled with the settings again. Let's see if that... I made it way bigger than the window actually is. To hopefully compensate for the way it crops the window. Uh... I don't think it worked though, but we'll see. Bro, your army is insane. What the fuck? I didn't even see it. You mean the patrol one? Yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> What's this? Uh, Hysterical non-agent says, I had a similar problem with some foreskin walkers before. Oh. Foreskin walkers. Oh, there goes her. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you didn't want to lose your monetization today. <laughs> Well, maybe maybe their maybe their uh, uh their uh, AI generated moderation won't even pick that up. Yeah, well, the figures you jumped in the stream, so I thought, ah, it's gone anyway. But no, it's it's all good. I wasn't, I didn't actually turn monetization on this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I hope I didn't like like, like, jeez, I've become a curse. <laughs> no, I like it when you show up. It's good. Oh, oh, that makes me feel better. It's a Nice bubbly, warm feeling in my pumpkin heart. <laughs> yeah, you're entertaining, in my opinion. That's good. Well, that's what I aim to be. I aim to be a degree of entertainment for at least some people. Even if a bit cringy, or even if a bit, you know, too comedic, even if a bit too, uh, bathotic? Uh... Is that a word? I don't think that's a word. Also, Florian. Hi! Hello! How are you? 
Yeah, hi, Florian. Ah, uh, no, nah, you don't. I don't get in trouble if you make posts like that. I don't mm. think so, anyway. So keep making posts like that. It's all good. <laughs> We're not aiming for YouTube kids. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really bother me if I lose my 20 cents I make on a video. It's not a big <laughs> deal. Well, no, it's quite sad to see that all there. Yeah, that's what YouTube will pay me. For like, um, even like videos that get a fair bit of views. It's usually like 20 cents or something. Mm. I actually got to me. Oh, sorry. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, you must need to get like serious views before you start making money on YouTube. Yeah. And it's all going to, to YouTube kids anyway. It's kind of tragic. And the only reason it's going to YouTube kids is because that's what YouTube has devolved into. Because yeah. parents um, don't want to spend time raising their kids, don't really want, don't have time to do so because they're working six jobs. All they can do is just plop them in front of the internet, you know, and they need YouTube to be safe for kids. Yeah. And otherwise, you know, the, uh, the working cattle are going to question why they have to do all this. <laughs> it's like, it's not about like, like, you know. Oh, you should be making it safe for my kids. No, the question will be asked, like, why am I doing this? Why am I not, why don't I have time to spend time and raise my kids? Because you're working. Because you're a, you're a wage slave, my friend. Well, the here capitalist... we go again, back into the political nonsense. Yeah. Well, you know, our corporate masters have the answer already. Just make the children work too. You can work with your child in the mines. Or whatever. Ah! It's our fault. Well, we we took that away from them. You know, we we said the children working. can't work anymore, so now we don't get to be with the children. Our, all our fault. Actually, you may have a point. We don't actually have dangerous jobs anymore. We got desk work. Why don't we teach kids how to do desk work? Yeah. We probably should teach them how to do programming. Teach like or teach them how to like run graphs and like run Excel programs. It's probably less damaging to the kids than school is. So put them to work, I say. Well, it's still boring as shit, and you'd have to give them <laughs> recess. You'd have to like you. It would be just like school only. You know, <clears throat> instead of sitting down and actually learning shit, you're learning how to. You know, you're learning how to do desk work. Yeah, and you get some job. money at the end of the day. Well, the money would probably go to their parents more than anything else, because it, it, it is still a child. But it would have to be catered in such a way, the same way they do um, child actors, and where they had to do a, a, a release form, you know, to make sure that kids did not get injured while on set. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know better than to take on this village of voodoo guys. Oh yeah, because they do zombies too. Yeah, well, I took on Those less zombies are still than alive. that in the last game, and I got my troll king got whooped. So like, I'm definitely not doing that again. But oh. I will take on this woodman. But back on the topic of YouTube, I actually got into a um, uh, it was a couple of years ago, but um, I ran into like one or two animators at one point, and uh the topic of uh, YouTube kids and monetization came up and like, how would anybody be able to make anything, you know, and their idea was to basically make a YouTube kids farm mm -hmm. with possibly, and the safest way of doing it is through abstract animation and art. It would purely be, and this is where the AI generation shit may come in handy. You just mass produce or you get a you use the same stuff that they use to animate, uh, you know, or that they use to generate art through um, algorithms. You just feed them a bunch of uh, like abstract forms, like random shapes, and then you tell the program to, with a couple of prompts, to animate it or randomly generate animations through there. And then you put some, some like, uh, you know, royalty-free music behind it, you know. And since there is, like, uh, programs out there that have existed, 
you know, since the 90s, that will sync audio with the uh, digital, digitally based animation. You can set you can set the auto generated animation to sync up with whatever music you're using, and then you just pump that out there. It's safe to safe for kids. They will inevitably watch it. They won't understand what the hell is going on, and it won't be offensive for the parents. Boom, boom, win, win. You basically have now just created a uh, randomly uh, generated animation farm. Wow. And that the kids will just inevitably watch. It will not cause any, you know, problems. And you can flood it in numerous channels. You can have these programs running 24-7 to generate as much animation as you need and effectively flood these channels with all of this randomly generate an animation that uses uh, royalty-free music. And eventually, you might even come to the point where you can get music licenses, and then boom, you've got randomly generated music videos. Sorry to change the topic for one second. I just have a question for Florian. Are you Doctor Anywhere, Florian? That's a secret code question, and if... Florian answers in a certain way. I will know if it's a Florian. I know or if it's just a random Florian. Anyway, please continue, Rambles. <laughs> oh yeah. The uh... yeah. I think that this could work if I could just find like a couple of programmers. I am already an artist, you know, and my skills like my forte is in surrealist art, and I'm one of like. That's where my my skills lie. If I could just find some folks to like help me with like that and get me like the programming and scripting involved, that might be a way of just generating passive income. <laughs> well, People are gonna hate it. People are gonna say that I'm exploiting a system, but surrealist art or sur like randomly generated ready-made art in that regard, like. It's not really gonna hurt anybody. It's not like I'm sh doing what all these, cr like all these other um, faux kids channels are doing, which are basically stealing other properties, running them through, you know, uh, Illustrator, not Illustrator, uh, uh, the the other Adobe program, uh, Photoshop. Not Photoshop. Uh, the um. After Effects? That goes with Premiere. Uh, I'm sure I'll remember it later. Or somebody somebody in the comics, comments will say to me. It's not Illustrator. It's, uh, it's, the, uh, it's the other one that does uh, special effects. I only, yeah, but... I only know about Acrobat, Reader, Photoshop, and Illustrator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Adobe Acrobat. No one ever used that. <laughs> Yeah. It's like the most unused like extension off of my fucking browser that I end up turning off because it lags so much. But yeah. Yeah, I don't like Adobe software. I don't like it either. I feel like it's overpriced and it's clunky as hell. And when people say it's an industry standard, they're lying. Or they're they've been lied to. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's very good, but ever since I went to a subscription, that's it for me. I don't like that model. I don't no, like having to rent software. The only, reason, yeah, the only reason they went to a subscription model is because their software had gotten so expensive that it was almost prohibitively expensive. Like, it was prohibitive to any small-time creators. Like, and they did this to the point where people were just flat-out pirating it. Like, yeah. When I discovered that I couldn't even get, you know, I couldn't even purchase a copy of just Photoshop or just Premiere, um, I went straight to Torrent because, like, I'm not paying them forty dollars a month. That's, I could get, I could get a Twitch subscription, a Discord subscription, and support Newgrounds for less than that. Yeah. You know, I can support a lot of other things with that money. What am I getting for supporting, you know, uh, fucking Photoshop with that model? Like, it they only, already have money. It they only, already... Yeah, I agree. It only makes sense if you're making money with the software to cover that. If you're not doing yeah. that, then there's no point. 
and like as far as I know, they change out their programmers, you know, and their you know their support staff every three years. They just lay off half their staff and then hire a new new cheaper, you know. And I'm like lately, I actually heard a rumor that they outsourced like a lot of their, you know, their coders to fucking um India. Oh, probably. Which is why the the newest version has so many bugs. <laughs> Yeah, outsourcing is um, a mixed bag. Yeah. I know because I work in the in the industry, and basically what happens is is that you get a whole heap of people that don't give a shit about what they're working on, but they'll do it yeah. for cheap, and that means that they cut lots of corners. They just because their eyes aren't on like making good software as such. Like a lot of the time, it's more just like a means to an end for them. So yeah. the companies will save a lot of like money, but they'll end up with something that nobody really gave a shit about and nobody really fought yeah. too much into. Yeah, it's, they can get basically buggy software. Uh, and um, yeah, two thousand twenties um, uh, <laughs> Spotify Wrapped uh event was a bit of a shit show because of the uh. The software that they used for getting the rap event shit, for some reason, looking into the program, it required you to have your camera on and your location GPS on on your phone on in order to in order to participate in the rap event. And I asked like a lot of questions to a couple of my friends, like, "Hey, uh." Why do they need that? Is this is really suspicious and nobody's talking about this? Or like are they actually like spying on people? And like one of my other programmer friends said, no, no. It's just it's it's a cheaply made program that's been used by other, you know, developers. I don't think they're trying to spy on anybody. I think that they just they just uh, you know, paid a random uh programmer to make this script or this code and they just recycled old code from another program that did track people how many um burger patties do you think you can make with like nine or ten packs of ground beef <laughs> <laughs> let me think hmm one pound could be if, if you were to make it each patty like usually it's like half not even a full pound it's like half a pound so and I'm I usually make them via palm though some people like to make them via disc pounder which is effectively just like this Tupperware thing that lets you pound out patties in advance then those actually use even less meat mm. if you were used to use the pounder that's about that's one quarter of a pound You'd make about four hundred burgers with a with a hundred uh with a hundred pounds of uh, beef. Damn, that's way more than I thought. Yeah, like it also depends on how you thin out the beef because you. I come from a family that put oatmeal in the patties. Oh God. Well, not not the flavored oatmeal, like or the instant stuff, like just regular grained oats. We've got so a European so dying over burgers. here. Or, you know, add some eggs, add some seasonings. You know, it all depends on how you season it. And so cursed. <laughs> if you add, my grandmother actually used to add lard to the burger to the uh, ground beef because a lot of she found that a lot of the store bought beef was way too lean, and whenever you cook lean beef, it comes out like cardboard. Yeah. So that's she would true. go out purposely get like pig fat or uh, you know bovine fat. Whatever whatever lard was available, she'd ball it up and she'd pack it inside the uh, inside the patty. Well, you know, and stuff it on the grill, and apparently they came out juicy as fuck. Yeah, you can just get like the mixed, like half half pork, half um beef mince or whatever. But to be honest, I can't afford that shit anymore. Like all I ever get is like pure pork ground meat because beef is just stupidly expensive. Oh yeah, oh yeah, especially in Australia too. Yeah, but it's funny. It also depends on where you are because, um, uh, you. I live in Ontario, and we do have a lot of beef uh, farmers around. We have a lot of beef farms. I, we get the biggest export anyway, 
And so much so that um, if I go into like a fair of foods or a Costco or any of the Loblaws around, I fucking hate Loblaws. Uh, you you could probably find a steak on sale or find like cheap steaks. They're usually pretty marbled though, and like a lot of them have like about ten percent fat. They just mm. have like a large strip of gristle on the end of it, so they're really low quality. But if you know how to you know, treat it, you know, how to strip this, you know, the meat off it, you know, you can, you make a pretty good steak. But the other way of doing it, and this is what, um, a lot of my, uh, my poorer friends do, is that you look for the cheap roasts. You look for, like, those cheap, you know, 10 to $15 roasts that are around three to four pounds. And you take it, and you buy that instead, you can no one says you can't cut it up and make it your own. Or hell, you take it to the butcher and they cut it up for you. Mm. And they don't change the price. And then you've got about you got about nine nine to ten steaks from a small fifteen dollar roast oh. that costs you less than that that's about three dollars a steak. Hang on one sec, something happened in in, in the game. I think cool. you lost your spellcaster, dude. Uh, I lost one of them, yes. He got fucked up. Yeah, anyway, back to steaks. Yeah. Yes, steaks. So, yeah, that is that is a life hack. And I'm waiting for the day when they actually do catch up and say, don't do that. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna. I don't but, know. Yeah. Yeah, just just get a fifteen dollar steak and then have it cut up into like about six to seven like uh, individual steaks, depending on how thick you want them. If you want them thin for rouladen, where you stuff it up with you know stuffing and you know stuffing stuff. <laughs> yeah, beef though beef is prohibitively expensive now. Like you're oh, looking at is. four or five times the price of like pork or chicken. So I just don't even bother with it anymore. Mm. I'll just be poor and eat eat pork. It's fine. I like pork. It's pretty sausage tasty. Yeah. Pork sausage is amazing. Also, scotch eggs are really good with pork. Yeah. And did you know that pork actually has a slightly better nutritional profile than, than beef does? Than beef? Yeah. Because yeah. pigs largely, you know, despite them, you know, having the longest, like, having a domestication period about as long as uh, as cows... Um, they have largely remained unchanged, really purely because of how adaptive their uh, their metabolism is. They can eat just about any anything, you know. They can eat just about anything yeah. and not have any adverse effects. That's that's where the pig toilet came from. Yeah. Also, um, beef is terrible for the environment. They've got to clear large swathes of forest, and it occupies lots lots of land, whereas Pigs, they take up a small amount of space, and you can feed them anything. So they're much, much better for the environment. Much more efficient. Yeah. So... Which is really ironic, because there's a lot of uh, groups, particularly religious groups, that have demonized, like, the consumption of pigs. Yeah, well, they're stupid, let's be honest. I, th I actually learned recently that it was purely based on... Um... Uh, racism towards a specific group of people. I don't remember the the exact name, but um, it was a long time ago, and it was because this uh, this group of people were kind of encroaching or moving into this territory that was occupied by both uh, 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 Israelis and Jews. Mm. Or, sorry, Israelis and uh, Muslims. Which is why both groups will, you know, have, like, specified do not eat pork. And oh, it yeah. It was you know, turn against this uh, group. Hysterical Agent just mentioned mealworms. Yeah, like, oh. insects are the next level of nutrition. Like, Oh, hell yeah. We should be eating those, honestly, but people have to get over the... There's a lot of issues... And once again, it stems from racism because uh, all these primitive groups that uh, the uh, when the British uh, explorers came around, that it was used as a means of uh, putting down a uh, 
a native population because natives were the ones that were eating stuff like tarantulas, roaches, grasshoppers. They were, and it was just mixed in with like, it was just very, very high protein um, trail mix for them. But it's like, ew, bugs. What are you? What is wrong with you? Yeah, I but wonder like, what, why Europeans don't eat bugs as much. Like, we, we would have at some point, right? Well, we came close. I mean, lobster was uh, considered, you know, peasant food because they they were, they were considered it um, bugs of the sea. They were no different from, like, you know, they're like rats, effectively. So yeah. they fed it to the slaves. And now, look, the lobster is now a gourmet dish. Hey, now they're um, actually going extinct, potentially. I think I stole your your base. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> I'll get that. It wasn't my my citadel, but it was sacred grove. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. But yeah, a little bit. Mm. Yeah, lobsters and stuff. Um, they have they have crustaceans, right? Which is. I'm not really sure on, on the science, but they're very similar to bugs. Oh yeah, they're they're similar to the scorpion. Yeah. And crab, crabs are sort of this are a weird sort of phenomenon because every single species, like the in the um yeah. etymology, crabs have evolved independently at least seven times in our ecosystem. Like, for some reason, nature really loves crabs. It loves the floor plan of crabs. It's giving crabs to everything. <laughs> Don't take that out of context. <laughs> <laughs> what I would like to see, and this kind of turns back into um, nutrition and different food sources, is uh, I want everything to become worms. Because worms don't have bones. Meaning, if you were to genetically modify and breed and, and create and breed and breed and breed a giant worm like something that's like you know as about the size of a like a uh, that has the width of a piglet but has like the length of a python just a giant ass worm all you can you could feed it like all sorts of stuff like you could literally feed it human waste if you wanted to but you could also turn it into sausage whenever you want or steak you could turn the small ones into sausage. You know, they would be easy to purge, like, you know, get the, like, the filth out of their intestines. And then you take them straight up, you know, you drown them, and then you fry them. Yeah. This is the most Australian thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> the, the would pre it's pre-bred sausage. Yes. The worms are just pre-bred sausage. Alright, yeah, sure. You can have your worms, I'll, I'll leave that to you. Yeah. Like, and you can make them varieties of different sizes. You can make ones that, if you were to, like... I want to see more DNA splicing. You know, I want to take, you know, a worm and give it, like, the taste of chicken, or the taste of pork, or even the taste of beef. Like, then we won't have to eat cows anymore. They would... You know, they would be primarily underground, you know, working in, like, underground farms, so there, you know, there wouldn't be any consumption of surface area, which means they would be better for the environment. There is a serious ick factor to get over there. I, I don't think I could eat that shit, to be honest. Okay, but, like... You'd have to you could... grind it up into, like, a powder, then I could have it, but... It, I'm not gonna chow it's... down on a fucking worm. I'd throw it... <laughs> right way it probably just look like sausage you wouldn't even know like it would actually the closest it would probably come to is like fucking haggis from first time cooking because you could take a segment of worm and then you know clean it and you know treat it spice it season it marinate it and then cook it you know pan fry it maybe even yeah there's, there's definitely no way I'm going to be able to eat that though just the wrong, like, um, the wrong, what's it called, upbringing. Like, there's just too much ick associated with that, so. Too, like, because worms are slimy. They're, yeah. They're there's... gross, and, you know. Yeah, that's the kind of thing you have to raise kids eating. Yeah. 
At this point, it's too late. Somebody dared me to eat a worm once when I was like seven. Oh, I hope you didn't. I hope you didn't. I did. Oh, you're lucky you didn't get like rat lungworm and shit. Well, it was an earthworm, so. Yeah. Still. You can get some nasty shit from that kind of thing. There was this dude in Australia who got dared to eat a slug. And he, he ate the slug, right? Yeah. And he he got some kind of parasite from it. He ended up being like turned into a vegetable. Like literally unable to walk, talk, move anything. Oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah. And that's because these creatures, they writhe around in the shit. And they like, they eat all kinds of nasty stuff. And they get nasty parasites and... If you eat those things, you can get really messed up. Yeah, I was a. Uh, luckily, I was a. Like, most kids are kind of almost indestructible. Yeah. So, like, ch ch child's immune systems are almost godly. It's one of the reasons why, you know, if there's a pandemic, you. St the the one group you stay away from are kids because they touch everything without any adverse effects. <laughs> Yeah, tough little bastards. How do they how do they do that? It's, it has to do with the enzymes in uh, the milk. They actually last, you know, um, depending how long you know a, a mother breastfeeds their child for, then enough uh, uh, the um, antibodies in the milk will carry over in the fat, and will actually stay in the fat of the the kid for like years afterwards. So, you wow. know. It, I think it lasts until they're about like seven or eight years old, and then all the fat stores get replaced with the, uh, you know, that. And those ends, those enzymes and those uh, antibodies will stay in the body for, for like literally years. So they end up getting like super powered, you know, immune systems that will basically, they see any kind of pathogen, it will, you know, it will go haywire and go kill, 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 you know. <clears throat> That's why a lot of kids get a lot, a lot more colds, but they also get over them a lot faster because of the antibodies. Yeah. By the way, if anyone's interested, here's the news story. Well, one of the news stories. It's the first one that came up when I googled it. Oh. About the the guy that ate the slug and ended up with rat lungworm. So if you want to see what what happens to that guy, you can take a look. I'm gonna take a look now. That's probably horrifying. Oh, it for sure is. The guy looks like a normal dude, and then he doesn't. He looks like a completely different person. So yeah, if you if you want to cook bugs and eat them, then you really have to make sure you cook the shit out of them. Oh, and, of course. And eat the right kind of bug. Like you don't. Want it was. To... It's the same thing we do with meat anyway, because we don't. Like, it's the same with, like, chicken meat. Chicken meat is filled with so many, like, pathogens and diseases. It's, like, one of the most, like, uh, salmonella-prone meats, yeah. you know, out there. We have to make sure we cook it all the way through. Yeah. I yeah. believe it all comes back to what the creature is eating. Like, beef oh, yeah. is one oh, of the cleanest sure. meats you can eat because all the, the cow eats is grass. And Oh, yeah. But if you eat a wild pig, then... That pig has been eating, like, basically everything. It's got all kinds yeah. of parasites, and all that stuff will just be transmitted straight to you. Oh, so you yeah, have to that's cook. why you gotta eat that. You gotta... You gotta... You gotta cook that shit, right? Yeah. Uh, I used to take deer meat, um... You know, my dad's a hunter, so he would bring home a lot of game, like caribou, moose, deer. And so I got to try a lot of uh, gamey meats. However, I used to eat it, um, I used to eat those meats, uh, very, uh, very rare, because I'm, I'm the kind of person who loves their meat rare. I love, uh, I like it when it's bleeding, it's, because it's <laughs> juicier and stuff, and. Yeah, I get that. When I told my dad this, he was kind of mortified. Yeah. And he said, and I was like, what, what's the big deal? It's like, th those are wild animals. Okay, uh, okay, what's the difference? It wasn't really clicking with me. He's like, they have parasites. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's like, you were taking your life into your hands. It's like, yeah. yeah. 
got pretty lucky there. It's all chance at the end of the day. Like you can drink like from the dirty water and you can be fine like nine out of ten times. You just get unlucky once, right? Oh, they um, they will actually eat smaller animals. Well, particularly they will um, they will chow down on baby birds for extra calcium. Yeah. No, oh. I don't know if baby baby birds have any parasites in them, but uh. I'm sure they do. They they get fed like weird worms and stuff, right? Oh yeah. And uh, hysterical. Um, no, he did not pick up any black bear. Um, I I have heard that bear salami is is pretty tasty though, but I'd feel kind of weird eating a bear. It's like one of the reasons why I'd feel weird eating octopus or uh, squid. I don't know. It's just like I don't like. Ah, they're just, they're, it's a bear. It's a predator. It's eating all sorts of stuff. That's true, yeah. But I'd eat it for sure. As long as it's cooked properly and stuff prepared. Oh, yeah. You know, in Germany, they do a really weird thing that no no one else does. They actually have a special kind of sausage. It's called Metwurst, and it's raw pork. And I've had it, and I don't know how they make it, like how they make pork that you can eat raw. I I don't know if it's a special part of the pig or if it's a pig fed a special diet or, or what it is. Is it dry or is it actually like like raw? It's raw, raw. It's like wet. It's like huh. pink. They probably um, they probably uh, like pickle it or something. Don't. And like a blind solution. It's not pickled or... or anything. It's it's completely unprocessed from what I understand. They must do something with the pigs. Yeah, I don't know what they do. I'll look it up for you so you can see. It looks like um, mincemeat. Hmm. Yeah, be right back. It's really good though, if you ever have it. Have you had that, Rusty? No, I've not. I have heard of it. But I've never had it. It's really nice, but I've got no clue how they make it. I've got no clue how it's safe either. This game is going long. It is, yeah. And um, the reason Medwars is safe, it's because it's the bacteria is eliminated through the curing and the smoking process. Hmm, but what about parasites? Mm, I guess it's not really an issue. I can't really find anything about them. Okay, so... Oh, I just no. know that they take it very seriously, the safety of it. Yeah. Apparently it's smoked to a degree. Oh, yeah. I, that was my yeah. other uh, thought, was that uh, smoke smoking meat instead of cooking it is an alternative. Yeah. It doesn't really taste smoked, though. It must be very lightly smoked if they do that. Because it's not like smoked salmon or something where you can taste it. Or well, maybe I'm just dead and I am a lich after all, so. I don't really have to eat. And that makes sense. Hmm. Oh, people are fighting on Twitter again. Did what people ever no? stop yeah, fighting on Twitter? 
What else is new? Yeah. What are they fighting about now? Um, somebody shared the uh, this really wholesome Mister Rogers meme about um, you know, you know, not being good at art, but it's the you know, it's the fun of doing it that's important. And no matter how, many, how anybody says it is, you know, it feels good to have just made something, you know. And that's that's a really wholesome way of like thinking. And I, you know. God, I'm like, Mr. Rogers was too good for this world, honestly. And, you know, one of my toxic, kind of toxic followers is just contesting it and said, no one in this accursed site ever thinks this way. You know, they keep sharing it, but they never actually follow it. You know, this stuff is hypocritical. And I'm just, you know, I'm looking at that going, maybe, maybe you should try. You know, maybe you should be part of the change. Like, <laughs> instead of just stating it, you know, like, maybe you can just try implementing it. You know, we should ignore the people that are putting other people down for not making p perfect shit, you know? And, like, I'm, I would much rather lift somebody up, even if they're a fucking terrible person overall, if they're still trying to make something on their own. Even if they're a little shit who says the N-word constantly, calls you fat when they're pissed off, you know? If they're- if they want to make something, if they have passion, feed that passion. Don't bitch at them for all the terrible shit they're doing, because they're probably doing terrible shit because they don't have pa They feel like their, you know, their work doesn't mean anything. Let them know and praise them. Praise them for their fucking work. Regardless of whatever, you know, they've done. Because they'll probably stop being a terrible person if you show engagement with, you know, the stuff that they're making. That's true, you yeah. Know? I agree with that. People say that I'm crazy for doing that, but it's proven to work. <laughs> like, t nine times out of ten, it works because a lot of these kids are just reacting because people have abused them. You know, people have put them down for being kids. They can't help what they are. They can't magically make themselves adult, and they can't magically make themselves better. They have to actually put a lot of work into tr trying to get better. Sorry for, like, turning this into, like, a, you know, a moralistic rant, but, you know. Uh, yes. But I think it's, like, important to actually discuss that, like, we should, like, maybe stop putting each other down. Yeah. Take every factor into account. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Even if you're my enemy, and even if you're a little shit, I'm still gonna boost you up, because I feel like that's probably the better thing to do. You know, I'm only gonna tear you down if you're already, you know, better than everybody else, and you're basically using that platform to punch down other people. That's when I start punching. That's <laughs> when I start putting people down. Yeah. That's the- and that is the only time I put people down. Yeah. But if you're starting out and you're kind of toxic, and it's clear that you have something there, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep enabling you know your shit, even if it's not that good, because you need to get better, and the only way to get better is to help is to be encouraging. Yeah, I'm probably repeating myself now, eh? But ah, yeah. so good. Um, it bears repeating. Yeah. It bears repeating. <sighs> that was a good message. So that's what they're fighting about, huh? Well, yeah, it's just you know people are arguing that you know we're ter we're just tearing other people down, you know. And you know what? Let's let's be the let's be the change. Let's be the change that brings positivity in. You know, there's like negativity is too easy. Negativity, you know, doesn't really do anything. Yeah, I agree. You know, it actually, you know, makes it so that not many people can, you know, get very far. And, you know, no one person can make, like, a lot of good things. You know, there are some that do, like, one-person projects. 
they, you know, and they, they can be, they are fantastic in their own right that they've made something on their own, but think about how much time it had taken them and how much time they would have had to improve and how much time they could ha have had to uh, make other things. Think about how one person projects, you know, they look very limited in some area because they're a one man team. Now imagine if that person had, imagine that person if they had other people who were working together with the same passion, that were willing to commit themselves. Then that, that one man team would have made, that one man team becomes, you know, multiple and he's able to focus on the thing that he's good at. Like, for example, you and your game and you and your mods, you know, you know, I kind of, you know, submit myself in there because your forte is being able to code and being able to program. That is your passions and what you're good at. And my passion is art and, you know, being able to um, make pretty things, <laughs> so to speak. I like making things, you know, pretty. Yeah. And you, you, I think you go far, your farthest, and you get your, your, the best bang for your buck when you, you're able to think about the thing that you're good at. Yeah, I'd say so. So, yeah. I don't want to get anything out of anything. The one thing that I do want is the satisfaction of knowing that I contributed to making something, you know, in the world. You know, that I put my energy towards helping another person. Yeah, I agree. That's pretty much what I'm about to, just like, yeah. helping people enjoy the time here. Yeah. Uh, think of the, what's it called? Uh, altruism? Yeah, like, like I'm, I'm, I like altruism. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, but, like it would be nice to like get something, but at this, at the end of the day, I'm in a pretty safe spot right now. Yeah, we can and be I can happy that. A little bit, so. Yeah, we can be happy. If that there's, there's an no... employer out there that will hire me, I could at least put this forward and say, "Hey, I did all this volunteer work for this other person," <laughs> and uh, yeah, does that count as work experience? Yeah. How many hours have I worked for you, or how many hours? I don't even know. I don't know. I I couldn't even clock it, but like, at least you have a good word for me. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Is that terrible? That's probably kind of bad, but like, like I think it's kind of reasonable, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just happy uh, I'm not in Ukraine with like Russian warheads falling on my doom. Oh, f fuck that noise. Whose idea was that in this modern time? What were they hoping to gain? Don't know. You're destroying infrastructure, you know, of another country, and there are other ways of getting around it. But why are they bombing it? Why are they destroying it? Is it because they just have all this military shit lying around? Like I kind of compare the um, Ru I compare Russia to America all the time so, because they have a lot of the same, you know, shit when it comes to dealing with the rest of the world. They kind of have this mentality that the rest of the world is there to serve them. You know, they put everything into their military. They treat their people as if they're pawns, you know, to be moved, and then um. Yeah, they make really bad uh, financial decisions when it comes to uh, government projects. They yeah. waste a lot of money for petty shit. <laughs> I have no clue. It doesn't really make yeah. much sense to me. It seems like a terrible idea. Nobody likes them. Nobody likes America any more than they like Russia. Like, I'm kind of looking at this and thinking, Russia and America should technically be allies. <laughs> Hell no. You know, they just, like, because... I think America's way be better than Russia, though. No offense to any Russians. Communism, capitalism, like... Depending on how they're used, they all end up becoming abuses of power. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, there were some good capitalists that were not taking it too far and understand that there's a better approach to it. If this... These people do not have money, and they are unable to work. You know what? It benefits me more to give them money so that they can you know, support themselves and find a means of being able to, accom to be accommodated for if they want to work. You know, I'm willing to invest into these things because it ultimately benefits me. And 
communism is the same way in that like hmm we should all work together as one because we are all equal equally working to that you know we should all be you know we should all be owning the factories you know and you know be able to take 100 percent the pay for ourselves you know we are the workers and we thus you know should have the right to own you know to the claim to this factory because we're the ones working to it the ceo doesn't own it or the ceo is. the ceo is not working in on the production line you know what right does he have to decide our fates you know <laughs> yeah i mean like it's all the same mindset but then it all just turned into you know some corrupt guy getting in charge and deciding you know why should i have to do this you know why should i have to support you i'm the one that's in charge i decide what you know who i get to support <laughs> yeah. yeah it's a weird thing it's all it's all about corruption i think it's Every side can work. It's the corruption that makes it bad. Like, if we just lived with the understanding that people matter, like, from, like, the smallest, poorest, you know, villager to the highest fucking aristocrat, everyone fucking matters and everyone is equal and everyone is human, you know? Like, that's the thing that we don't actually think about, is that everyone is fucking human. And everyone is prone to human mistakes. You know? We need to sort of change our mindset to sort of recognize that. It's really difficult because we sort of adapted and, you know, have these automatic, uh, like, these automatic instances in where we just, you know, we just assume everything. You know? And you know what they say about it, assuming, right? Mm. Never assume. It makes an ass out of you and me. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't think anything can ever like I have a really bleak outlook on this for our species, but I don't think that anything can ever actually work because you can have the most perfect system ever, but people will corrupt it and like change it to service them selfishly. And yeah. you'll never you'll never get around that. Like it doesn't need matter. To find, like, the, the science of selfishness in that regard. Like we need to look at the, like the Patrick Bates of the world and try to understand what makes them psychotic in this way. What makes them this, you know, antisocial in this regard? Because I can tell when you, you look at an antisocial person, you look they point at the person who sits behind the computer and doesn't go outside. That's not an antisocial person because they're being social on the internet. That's still socialization. I can tell you I'm the answer. At I'm looking at the, uh, I'm looking at the people that are deliberately going out of their way to use people as objects. I can tell you and... why. It's just evolution. It's, it's like parasitic yeah. nature. It's when you've got yeah. everyone working together, at some point yeah. someone will evolve to exploit those people working together. And, um, that's just how it is. It is like, it is definitely an adaptation. You're, you're not wrong there. And the adaptation is very terrifying, and I think if we could find a way of, you know, pinpointing where that adaptation is, either find a way of making it functional so that it's not, like, dangerous, because I think it's, it's, there's also the nurture side of it, where, like, you have children that grow up in very horrendous environments and have adapted to some terrible things, and they can't seem to break that adaptation, and a lot of it has to do with betrayal of trust because it takes sometimes it takes a sociopath to create a sociopath because when you are influenced in you know in a way that trusting people puts you in danger or, or trusting anybody makes you vulnerable um you you kind of get enabled into you know destroying or you kind of get enabled into wanting to use other people because other people have used you you know hmm. It can. It is an influence in that regard. Yeah, you can have the uh, the exceptions to the rule of like, yeah, I don't trust anybody but this person. But even then, you know, you have to go through some serious mental gymnastics in that regard. Like, where is the boundary there? Like, do you trust this person? You know, what what reason do you have to trust this person over that person? You know, you know, is it because they have this? Is it because they have that? Or is it because you have something? that can exploit them so that if they try and 
you know, backstab you in any way, you can literally, like, destroy their life. Yeah. I have no clue how you fix it, because if you have, like, a bag of blood, then a mosquito will evolve to suck that blood. Similarly, if you've got, like, a whole heap of nice people working together, yeah. someone's going to evolve to exploit that. I don't see how you get around it at all. Like, awareness. It's... You know, having a, an awareness of it and have being able to... Humans are the only creatures on the planet to be able to literally visualize and, you know, imagine what it's like to live as the other person. You know, we are the only creatures on the planet that do this. That, as well as to have have such complicated communication. Um, like, we can not only visualize ourselves in the position of the other person or the other individual, but we can also, like, s communicate that back to the other individual and confirm, you know, our suspicions. Like, for example, you, you as a, if you were a rich kid and you see a poor kid, you'd want to question, you know, you'd want to try to understand why this kid is poor, you know, or at least to some degree, you know, you want to, we are very curious creatures. We are very, you know, we want to figure things out. We are smart. Humans are fucking smart. And I think we need to be able to trust each other in being smart. And if we're not that smart, it takes another human that is smart to help other humans be smart, you know, to be able to communicate and have that collective, you know, intelligence. Being able to communicate is how we have a collective. Mm, yeah, I don't know. It's it's difficult because we're kind of taught the uh, that the individualism is important, you know, and it's it's kind of a weird balance because you yourself are important, you know, uh, yes, as an individual, but you as part of a collective is just as important, you know. Both are very important. Both being an individual and being, like, you know, part of a community or part of a, you know, a group. And within that group, you kind of have to, it's sort of almost ingrained in us to want to care for other people. Even if it doesn't really benefit us. You know, it's something that's hard to get out of this. Get out of it, unless you, you know... Like, your life has been so terrible that, you know, the benefit of others, you know, means nothing. You know? But that takes a lot of abuse. You know, it takes a lot of terrible things. Like, I have a friend of mine named, uh... Well, I'm not gonna name him here, but... But he had, uh... And when he was a kid, he experienced something when he was walking through a strip in Mexico. He was walking with a friend... And his brother, or a friend of his brother, he was walking around, and somebody had come up from behind him and and uh, shot um, his brother's friend in the head and then walked away. Damn. And he said he'd, like, from that point forward, he didn't understand what the hell was happening. He didn't even know what had gone on. He said it was basically um, his, that the kid's family had to... Uh, or the kid's dad had bad mouth to, to like a cartel member or something, and he didn't under he didn't know how he didn't become some terrified psychopath after that after basically witnessing, you know, somebody who was like a friend of their brothers or somebody who was the literally their own age literally just get you know murdered on the street, and it could just be you know how like people adapt to things, but you know. From that point forward, it just sort of, like, it just clicked at him, like, mortality is just a, a thing. But he is one of the nicest people I've ever met, and he loves horror movies, specifically Japanese horror and gore. But, like, the fact that he, like, experienced that and lived through that, like, thing, and it did not, like, traumatize him too much. Well, who's, who's to say? Maybe it did actually traumatize him. You know, in, in, in a way, but the fact that he was still able to come out on top and still be, like, an awesome person, you know, I think I think a lot of people have potential to be more than what they are, you know. 
Sure. Yeah. Sorry, I've been rambling way too long about this. So sort of like way too passionate, you know, speech <laughs> about you know, human lives matter. <laughs> you know, <but> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me check in on the game real quick. How's it going, dude? Uh, I mean, not too bad. I'm trying to not be weak as fuck. Uh, you know, I'm trying. I've been terraforming everything. Looks everything, good. Yeah, everything's become either a haunted troll forest or a swamp. One of those two things. I have noticed, yeah. I'm looking good. Yeah, I don't know where the enemy is, though. We need to find them. And I have them. no idea, and I have, I have no idea who they are, either. Like, there's a blue guy. What's that? I don't know. Might be the only one left. Maybe, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, to tell me if my, uh... If, uh, if I get to be too much on this nonsense, you can just tell me to shut up, so... Yeah, I don't. All good. All good, I think. Oh, that's good. Bruh. Oh, yeah. Uh... <sighs> so, what have you got going on today, Rambles? Um, not much. Um, I started playing, um, or replaying, um, Graveyard Keeper. And. Graveyard Keeper is one of those games where I both enjoy the aspect of it, I enjoy like the um the gameplay loop, but my god, it can be so terrible. Just in some ways, because you depending on how you play it, um, you can you can seriously nerf yourself. Or just like you can I thought I ended up soft locking my game because there is one resource that, you know, you can't really access unless you do a specific like amount of steps, but there's nothing in the game that says to do those steps in a very specific way. Um there's a resource that you have a very limited amount in the beginning. Um and it's the this they have three different forms of XP that you use to purchase uh technologies and a tech tree. You can only get blue experience from doing spiritual things. And one of those spiritual things is, uh... You have to, um, do stuff with this, uh, this church. Because you, you actually play the game as, like, this, uh, this pastor or whatever, or this cleric. You know, and the only way to unlock a cleric is if you upgrade the church. The only way to upgrade the church is if you unlock things in the tech tree that require blue experience. The blue experience, you have a very limited amount, and if you put it in the wrong things, you have no way of getting blue experience. So you could easily soft lock the game if you don't know what you're doing. Damn. Yeah, I've never I... played Graveyard Keeper. Oh, you probably wouldn't like it. It's it's a very it's a it's a resource management game. Yeah, it's it... a lot of uh, resource management. Is it like Stardew Valley? A little bit. It's a it's a little bit. Stardew Valley's better, in my opinion. I feel like they did borrow a lot of things. Um, it goes from having way too many things to do and way too many like um uh, quest objectives that also require other quest objectives. In order to um, in fact, one of the biggest quests. One of the, f the quests in the beginning require end up they end up getting you to talk to the same NPC three times, and then you can't progress with that NPC unless you get more friendship with them. So it all rides in being able to complete quests for that NPC, and not all the NPCs are around on the same date because you have like a week thing, where. You know, only specific NPCs show up on specific days of the week. And them being on this strict schedule almost makes it impossible. And when you have other things done, which is like having to manage the bodies, which, mind you, 
managing the bodies is already difficult enough, especially when you have a energy bar, which in the newest update they ended up nerfing because now everything costs even more energy or your your energy bar actually drains faster now. So you have to sleep, you have to eat, and you have to, you know, spend energy managing bodies which will rot if you don't manage them. This on top of having to do quests. Like I'm so glad that the quests object the quest objectives are not not time based because that would have made it even more hell. If they do a hard mode where the quest objectives are time based, I'm like this will be the worst game in the world for like, you know, time and resource management. It's it, it's a life sim without it being a real life sim. Yeah. Yeah. And uh yeah, I've almost soft locked my game in the beginning because I used all of my blue XP on something stupid. Because I already played the game up to a, a point and I never beat it. And I, I'm the kind of person who, if I haven't played this game in like a long time, I will just restart it. And then I will think about the things that I remembered and I try to go down that path. And I, for, you know, I don't consider everything else that, to, that gets to that point. So nice. yeah, the game is fucking hard. And then the game gets very... All the things that are frustrating in the beginning become become super trivialized when you unlock zombies. Because you can actually have zombie minions in the game. Oh, okay. And they do work but, for you, I guess? Oh yeah, they actually automate a lot of the things, like gardening. They, you know... And they, uh, oh, no combat, oh right? is this... Yeah, Isvin... Is oh, is Isvin. Yeah. How's it nice going? Nice to see you, man. Yeah, yeah Sorry no for Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can... You basically, one of the big things that ends up uh, being, like, the end game profit profit margin thing is the, uh, you actually have a, uh, you can create a zombie production line. You send zombies to mine from a quarry, which gets gets you infinite stone. You send my, you know, zombies out to uh, harvest a tree, which gives you infinite wood. Then you have, with the infinite stone and infinite wood and infinite iron. Oh fuck! Now I have the fucking doorbell. I'll be right back. Okay. This is terrible. I apologize. It's all good. So, I'm going to try and kill off this this army that's sort of east of the Necromancer layer, the Dark Citadel or whatever. Please do. That would be fantastic. Yeah, I'm um, not, not sure I'll succeed though. I can try and do something. Not exactly sure how much good that I'll do, but you know, we'll see. Oh. Yeah, that that army is probably not going to be enough for you to take it out. But I see you're in a sacred grove, right? Are they actually coming? For yeah. Them? I don't know. Possibly. <laughs> oh, I'm back. Sorry about that. Sorry. Right. Telemarketer, right. or not like a uh, uh, door-to-door salesman type thing. Somebody oh. who wanted to—I couldn't tell if they wanted to sell me something or if it had to do with the church. Probably both. Um. Well, where was I? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Zombies. You can have effectively a zombie factory. So infinite wood, oh. infinite stone, infinite iron, because they it becomes completely automated and trivialized. Then you create the zombie farms, which are zombies that uh, work the... Uh, you can grow crops in the game via Stardew Valley shit. Uh, they work the farm, they produce... They will... They keep producing vegetables for you, goddammit. <laughs> they... Yeah. And you develop and build a crate line, which um, when you 
go through the quest with the traitor, which is one of the ones that gets the end game items to go through the, you know, for the main quests. Because apparently there's an end to the game. Uh, yeah, you effectively create a production line where you just send zombies with crates to fill up a storeroom, and every week they, depending on how many crates of goods you, you know, you have in this warehouse, you get a hefty profit. Now I've gotten up to about 20 gold a week. And gold in the money in the game is almost borderline impossible to acquire. It feels like, you know, it feels like vanilla wow. You know, level one, you know, first jumping into the game. Ooh. He got killed. Damn, that sucks. Yeah, I got fucked up. I would like you know, say, like, oh, this game has zombies and animation, has a cool aesthetic. Like, no, I am not recommending this game. Okay. Just because of how frustrating it is in the beginning. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not too keen on frustrating games. No, and, like, Tiny Build, you know, they're they're a cute company. They, they've made some really nice stuff. They've made some really stu good stuff. And this game was made in a, in a game jam. And became popular because of that. Oh, okay. I'm kind of annoyed that I can't like uh, uh, customize my character though. And I, I made a comment on, about this on Twitter like a little, like a couple of days ago. But I said like, looking at uh, looking at the main character, he looks like Eric Nagel. Like, and I maybe I'm just dating myself. Nobody remembers who Eric Nagel is, and I feel so fucking old. Yeah, I've got no clue. Never heard of that. Um, he was a musician from, uh, The Elephant Show with Sharon Lone and Bran. The Elephant Show? Yeah. What the hell is that? <laughs> Something from the early 80s, from the late 80s and early 90s. It was oh a kid's God. show where they had a dude in an elephant costume and these three these three older people, there's these three older characters that sang. That's all I know. But yeah, then you had the side character who was just this. Uh, he was a country bumpkin in a beard with a beard that he was just. He was like the. He was like everybody's dad. It was like everybody's dream dad. And then he had a spinoff with his own show, which was a sitcom called Eric's World, wow. which was effectively a ripoff of Elf, because for some reason. Uh, they had a puppet character, and like I, I don't get why all these shows were doing this. Yeah, but like the there was a sitcom that would have a puppet, a, just a random for no reason puppet character. Yeah, they always had puppets for some reason. Yeah, does anyone remember that face? Maybe they should bring that back. <laughs> just have a puppet character. I don't know if they should bring it back. <laughs> no, because like in this day and age, the like the puppet's gonna end up saying the n word. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was just pretty shit in general, I don't know. The whole puppet thing. It was a gimmick. Nobody cared. Like, if they were to bring back Roseanne, they'd put a puppet in it. If Rusky says it should come back, then maybe I'll be convinced, but... I don't know, I got nightmares from puppets, fuck that. Okay. Right, let's see how I go with this Dark Citadel. Hopefully I can drive them out of it. Okay, fine. I got a lot of trolls, so it should work. Okay. Go trolls. My cat is concerned about me, and now he's crawling up in my lap and deciding he wants to, you know, room me for some reason. Is this just- is this just a thing? Just cats just do this? Yeah. I think so, is probably. Cause my cat is the only cat in my life who's ever, like, gone out of his way to just start, like, licking my hair. <laughs> just... I think it's an affectionate grooming thing. He just sees me as a big, dumb cat. I'll pick it to you. Here, let me fix that. Oh, you got a cow lick here. Oh wait, it's giving you another pallet. Oh well. <gasps> yeah. These these guys just half damage the trolls because they keep regenerating. It's 
pretty awesome. I'm so OP. <sighs> it might be possible that it's only the Scourge Ward left. I can't see anyone else. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to win then, because he seems pretty on the back foot. He does, yes. Does the Thorn live the church market? What is the church market? Like, I think it's like where you get bake sales. Because, like, that's the only market I can think the church doing is, like, fucking bake sales. Okay, so we won. We drove him out of there. That's great. My shaman was able to drive away and go on with nothing but frogs. <laughs> it's pretty good. <sighs> you are the happiest cat. You are the happiest content. <sighs> Imagine if they added necromancy to uh, Stardew Valley. That'd be pretty good, probably. Because there, there are skeletons in the game, but they're enemies. But there's no actual, like, code in place for, like, companions or pets, but there is, uh, there is, like, multiplayer stuff. So it's, like, it's one, of the, one of the things that, um, I thought was really interesting is that the, uh, the spouse characters have weapons that are not accessible. So my thought process was, like, were your spouses supposed to come and join you in dungeons? Oh, maybe. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. Could be. Also, I found out recently, and I don't even know if this is actually real or not, but apparently you can invite uh, Krobus, the uh, shadow creature from the sewer, in Stardew Valley to be on your farm. I don't know if this, like, if this was, like, a mod or something. Or if this is actually canon in the game now. I might have to, like, definitely replay uh, Stardew Valley at that, at some point. Yeah. Every girl I've ever met has loved Stardew Valley. <laughs> and they always try to convince me to play it with them. And usually I cave. And it's alright. Yeah, it's, it's nothing special. And I don't know if I could ever, like, have anybody play with me. Although I've had, like, one one guy has wanted to play Stardew with me. And, uh... Like... I don't know. I'm the kind of person, like, when it comes to, like, games like Stardew, I much prefer to play by myself. You know, because it's not, it's, it's, it's one of those, it's a, it's a, uh, it's one, it's a cozy game. You know, it's cozy games I like enjoying, you know, alone. I like to just chill, you know, have my cozy hour, you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yeah. It's kind of like me in building games. I don't know, when like it's uh, somebody with the. Uh, you know, being like, oh, you gotta play with me, I wanna play with another person. This game is really fun with other people. Like, And I'm sitting there under a lot of pressure because they're, they're min maxing right on, you know, the first week in the game, and I'm just fishing. Because <laughs> I don't know what to do. He's done everything. You know, he's planted both of our parsnips. He's got them. He's got, like, the fertilizer already. He's got everything, and I'm just... I just want the fishing rod, because I want to fish. 
Because yeah. that's just what it is. It's like, hey, you want to do this? You want to do that? The dungeons aren't even open yet, and already we have about a thousand gold. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to fish. <laughs> Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? Let's go harvest stuff. But I'm fishing. The fish. fish. Fishing in that game is pretty broken, though. Fish fishing in like a lot of games is kind of broken, with the exception of a uh, graveyard keeper, because of course they had to put fishing in that game. Yeah, they put fishing and, in uh, every game almost. Don't yeah, they? and it's like it's almost exactly like Stardew Valley with like a few like um. With like a few, ex you know, changes, with a few like minor ex exceptions. The yeah, the game, uh, fucking, yeah, it's it the it's the exact same mini game, but the, but the fish in that game don't get you anything. <laughs> you start off like fishing up minnows that are like one copper each, but you're supposed to use that fish to get bigger fish, but the bigger fish aren't. You don't even get you that much. They get you, like, maybe... Whereas the minnows are one copper, the bigger fish are, like, maybe five copper. And everything in the game, you know, that's worthwhile costs silver. So, yeah, this game is... It's difficult to make money in this game. Damn, yeah. Yeah. And then they actually did include some DLC as well, though. And I, I did buy a, like, a, a, I think I bought it. It's either that or I ended up getting DLC for free somehow. But the, um, the Stranger Sins DLC update, um, you get to build a ta an automated tavern where you hire a ghost who goes and, uh, runs the bar in your absence and you end up you can create a zombie an automated zombie vineyard and like zombie brewing brewing factory which will send alcohol up to this place up to this like this new tavern you open but the tavern yes it's a great money making uh thing and you're managing this tavern on top of that uh you're there's a another quest in this DLC where you have to find artifacts. I ended up getting this DLC before and yeah. unlocking it before I even had a chance to finish the main quest. So, so we won? Yeah, we won. Oh, yeah, I should. You did it. Oh, grand, I come back back. You did it. We didn't even get to finish him, though. Oh, yes, I did. Um. I killed him. Oh, how'd you kill him? Where was he? He just had one army left. Uh, oh. The Damn, I was about to go to like the primal plane and all kinds of shit, bruh. <laughs> oh. oh well. That'll have to be Damn. for another one. Um, yeah. let's end it here. Uh, thanks so much for playing and thanks so much for uh, joining us, Rambles, and keeping <laughs> us occupied. Yeah, filling the silence yeah. with nonsense. <laughs> yeah. uh, we appreciate that. Thanks oh, to yeah. anyone who watched and enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next one. Yeah. Hey, Rambles and, and Rusky, we can hang out later if you